The time is 10 a.m. and this is WKYT Midmorning. Changes could be coming to the Fayette County School calendar next year. We can see if the things are going to change. There's a big discussion slated for today. A Lexington man is in custody after he broke into a home and allegedly shot a family member. And a Knox County woman with roots in Louisiana is working to help her home state still ravaged by floodwaters. This is WKYT Midmorning. Good morning and welcome in. It is Monday, August 22nd, and we're glad you're on Midmorning. I'm Bill Bryant. And I'm Barbara Bailey. Comfortable <laughs> weather outside, and it's pretty too. A big change for me. We were at the Woodland oh. Art Fair on Saturday, and the rain was pouring. You actually down. laughed at me because you turned around, and my hair had gone wild like this, and I had water pouring or sweat pouring off my face. So we've had good improvements, and uh, nobody's <laughs> yes, complaining right. at Micah anymore. So <laughs> thank you, Lord. Right, finally a break in the action. The past five to seven weeks, we have been on and off of the showers and thunderstorms. It seems like every single day, at least the chance there, and. Now we're actually getting a break from it. And, and not just a break from just showers and thunderstorms, but also a break from the flooding, a break from uh, severe weather. So there's some good news for us. Temperatures are there in the 70s. A little fog down south that actually kept us temperature wise in the 60s right now. 63 degrees in Somerset. I mean, a really good feel outside. How long does it last, though? That is the question. I have that in my seven day coming up. All right. And first this mid morning on WKYT, school could start a week later in Fayette County next year. The Fayette County School Board will meet tonight to talk about pushing the start of the school year back by about one week. The proposal presented to the school board last week would put students back in the classrooms on August 16th next year, compared to the start date of August 10th this year. The district's pupil personnel director says the majority of 30 school staff members he surveyed, which includes administrators, were in favor of the later start date. That vote will happen tonight at the central office. A big party in Whitley County ended with three people in handcuffs. And a lot more run off. Deputies broke up what's being called the barn burner after they say they received tips of underage drinking. Deputies say they were alerted about the big party being held at a farm located off Cripple Creek Road Saturday night. When they got there, deputies encountered a crowd of nearly 300 people. They say many of them were underaged, intoxicated, and they were from multiple counties. Officers made three arrests there. A man who Lexington police say shot his cousin is expected to be in court this morning. Police have arrested Anthony Beard Jr. They've charged him with assault and burglary after the shooting. Police say Beard broke into a home belonging to a family member on Jackson Street Sunday afternoon while armed with a handgun. Police say Beard and his 23 year old cousin got into an argument. They say Beard shot his cousin once in each leg and twice in the right arm. They say another bullet grazed the victim's stomach. Beard later was detained without incident with police. He's being held on assault and burglary charges and will be arraigned today in Fayette District Court. University of Kentucky police have arrested a man who they say was trying to sell stolen books. They say Anthony Shields broke into offices on UK's campus and stole textbooks. They think he's also connected to thefts at Moorhead State, EKU, and WKU. Police say they caught Shields when he tried to sell a stolen Western Kentucky University textbook at a UK campus bookstore. Shields does not have any affiliation with UK. One of the things that we found out also is he's actually sold some of the books in different states uh, as far as uh, Birmingham, Alabama. So we're tracking all this down and it's continuing to unfold as we go. When officers arrested Shields, they found a tire iron in his car. They think he used it to break into the College of Nursing offices. Shields is now charged with third-degree burglary and possession of burglary tools. State police are looking for two teenagers who are missing from a Rowan County foster care program. Troopers say two girls walked away from Sunrise Foster Care in Moorhead on Thursday. Brianna Gregory is from Kenton County. She was last seen wearing a blue shirt, gray pants, and dark colored sweatshirt. Troopers think she's with Layla Hood from Powell County. Hood was last seen wearing a pink sweatshirt and black leggings. 
An Ox County woman is heading down to Louisiana today to help clean up after those devastating floods. Laura Rose grew up in East Baton Rouge in the parish there. She says her loved ones there have been asking her for help, and she's asking for supplies to help them with cleanup and is asking the community for donations as well. She says she's grateful to live in such a generous area. I mean, I'm, I might be from Baton Rouge, and that's my hometown, but this week I've definitely learned I wouldn't want to live anywhere else. Laura is sending the supplies with her husband and father, and they leave for Baton Rouge today. Well, it has been weeks since a man's daughter died near a cabin in Wolf County. Since then, state police have charged three people with her murder. The latest of those charges came this weekend. State police arrested Carla Hunt in Bath County. She and two others are accused of killing Brandy Davidson and Devin Payton earlier this year. Their bodies were found in Wolf and Montgomery counties. Davidson's father says now his three year old granddaughter, Chloe, is left without a mom. Chloe had seen the news just as she was laying in my lap. I thought she was asleep. She said, There's mama. I ain't hurt so bad. I mean, to hear her say, You know, my mama had been killed. Hunt is in the Three Forks Jail in Lee County. She's charged with murder and tampering with physical evidence. A noted death in the Kentucky news business. Mark Chelgren covered state government for more than 20 years for the Associated Press. He died over the weekend of an apparent heart attack. Chelgren had the nickname Bones because he was a thin, scrappy reporter around the state capitol. Chelgren was a native of Ashland. He was 62. Well, today is the first day of school in Miami, Florida, where there are growing Zika concerns. Health leaders are keeping an eye on two designated Zika zones. 8,000 students will be attending school in those zones. And the school superintendent there has considered relocating the students. Instead, district leaders will hand out protective clothing, long sleeves, and pants for students who need them. They'll also give out bug repellent. 36 people in the two zones have Zika. The Clinton campaign says the Democratic nominee, nominee is halfway to a $1 billion fundraising goal, while Donald Trump's campaign promises it's back on track after another week of falling poll numbers. As Brian Webb reports, Trump may now be softening his stance on previous calls for the mass deportation of illegal immigrants. Donald Trump's newly shuffled campaign staff signaled a possible shift in his stance on deporting millions of illegal immigrants Sunday. What he supports is to make sure that we enforce the law and that we are fair and humane for those who live among us in this country. Will that plan include a deportation force? To be determined. The mixed signals on Trump's deportation force plan comes as the Republican nominee continued reaching out to minority voters over the weekend. He met with Hispanic leaders in New York on Saturday after sending a stark message to African Americans earlier in the week. You're living in poverty. Your schools are no good. You have no jobs. 58% of your youth is unemployed. What the hell do you have to lose? A new CBS News battleground tracker poll shows Clinton now six points ahead of Trump in Ohio, a crucial state for his campaign. Hillary Clinton is on a fundraising blitz, 14 states in two weeks, as she tries to put her long lasting email scandal behind her. Her campaign manager addressed a more recent issue, denying foreign donors to the Clinton Foundation received any special treatment. We have Republicans in Congress and right-wing groups doing everything they can to try to uh, make something out of nothing here. Clinton will continue fundraising today in Los Angeles while Trump campaigns in Ohio. Brian Webb for CBS News. And over the weekend, the Trump campaign started running its first general election ads in battleground states where Trump is trailing Hillary Clinton. Clinton has already spent $67 million on general election ads. Well, the Summer Olympics in Rio have come to a close. Four-time gold medalist Simone Biles carried the American flag during last night's closing ceremonies. Team USA earned 121 medals, 46 of them gold, the most of any nation. The next summer games are in Tokyo in 2020.
All right. A lot it's of been fun a, viewing. It was a great run oh, for the gosh, USA. Yes. Yeah, right. <laughs> and keep it right here this mid morning. Coming up, we'll tell you how you can score some valuable jewelry with a history in American politics. And a well known popular movie reappears to the delight of fans old and new. It's all about the feel outside this morning and toward your afternoon. You'll absolutely love the temperatures then, too. Now, how long does it last? Because it's still the summer. I'll show you that in your forecast coming up. Now, your zone by zone forecast with meteorologist Micah Harris. It's a pretty good looking day, and store temperatures are already sitting there in the upper 60s, lower 70s. And it's really not budging down south. We're at 63 in Somerset, London, Corbin, Middlesbrough, Harlan at 61 degrees down in the mountains in southeastern Kentucky. That's all due to a little bit of fog still hanging tight down south and southeast in some spots. And as we go across the roadways here, I don't see any problems whatsoever. Looking for you now, and if you're about to run out some errands, no problems whatsoever before noontime. Paris Pike, Russell Cave looks pretty good all the way to Newtown Pike. No issues whatsoever as you're coming across 75 and 64. We go through your day 79 by the afternoon, upper 70s, lower 80s is what's expected for a high today. Now, I will tell you this. Today is your best feeling day. There's no doubt about it. However, it's not your only nice feeling day. We head off towards your day tomorrow, and it looks like humidity is still going to be down. But what's going to be happening is temperatures go first. They start to rise first. Then comes the humidity. Then come the rain chances. That's the way it really goes, and that's the way it's going to go with this route, too. So today it feels great. Tomorrow, really not all that bad. Still below that humid level uh, there on your Tuesday, off into your Wednesday. That's when it gets a little bit oppressive. And when you start to see that jump like that, you know some rain's on the way. Not so much on Wednesday, only a slight chance of rain on Wednesday. But really, Thursday off into your Friday, those are your better opportunities of rain in the forecast. But they're still not great. 40% there on Thursday, 30% on your Friday. So now through, say, Wednesday, remember, Wednesday's a slight chance of rain. But still, it's, it's really not bad. 86 degrees is your average high for this time of year. And we'll be that on your Wednesday. And then we start to see that front get a little bit closer on Thursday and Friday. And that's when the rain starts to increase just a bit. Now, I'll tell you this. None of this looks very impressive, meaning don't look for rainfall totals one to three inches. It's nothing like that. So flooding's not a concern. Severe weather is not a concern at this moment. And so this is just your run and mill thunderstorms. When's the last time I've been able to say that? Mill. Isn't that nice? When ordinary. I can just say, hey, they're just your ordinary thunderstorms that come during the afternoon, put down some rain, and that's about it. They get on out of here for the weekend, too. That's it's good. A good looking season. Even better. Yeah. Lots right. of events on the weekend. There so you go. We hope it all works out. Thank you. Well, here's your chance to dress like the closest thing to American royalty if you can afford it. <laughs> you could soon bid on jewelry worn by former First Lady Nancy Reagan. Among the items, a diamond and gold lion pendant, brooch necklace, and a sapphire and ruby American flag ring. Items belonging to her husband, former President Ronald Reagan, are also being auctioned off. Among those items are cowboy boots with the presidential seal on them, and the auction benefits the Reagan Presidential Foundation and Institution. It will begin next month. So get your bids together. It'll be interesting to see how <laughs> yeah, high those bids see what go. That goes yes. for, yeah. Well, more on the summer showdown at the box office. And we'll tell you why Thelma and Louise is back on the big screen. Daniel Nottingham has your eye on entertainment. It's been 25 years since Thelma and Louise took the ultimate road trip. To mark the anniversary, the movie is back in theaters nationwide this week. Gina Davis and Susan Sarandon star as best friends looking to escape the boredom of their lives. Their little getaway takes an unexpected detour. A new movie pulls back the curtain on family life with all its comedy and heartbreak. Ice cream and pretzels, one of my mom's favorite things. Hey, how about heart attacks? Is that one of her favorite things too? John Krasinski directed The Hollers and stars as a struggling artist who returns home to a dysfunctional family. I think that what this this movie is trying to be all about is family is complicated, but there's it's where you're from. There's something that you have to keep fighting for. Margot Martindale stars as the mother. She's the center of the family. She's the boss of the family. She's the chief of the family, and um, she loves her boys 
so very much. More the Hollers opens on Friday. We're bad guys. It's what we do. And Suicide Squad out. show dominance at the box office for a third straight week. Warner Brothers' super villain flick pulled in nearly $21 million. The big budget remake of Ben Hur was a flop. It debuted with $11 million. And that's your eye on entertainment. Danielle Nottingham, CBS News, Los Angeles. All right, hope you keep it here. Lace up your sneakers for a Sunday afternoon stroll. You can take part in the Bluegrass Autism Walk. That's next on WKYT. Before we head to break, tomorrow night's Mega Millions jackpot is $69 million, and Wednesday night's Powerball jackpot has climbed to $127 million. We'll be right back on Mid Morning. Welcome back in. It's mid-morning on WKYT. We're sure glad you're with us today. Autism now affects one in 68 children here in the U.S. And you can help bring awareness to the disorder by lacing up your walking shoes for the Bluegrass Autism Walk. We're joined by Sarah Spragans, Autism Society of the Bluegrass President, along with board member Sherry Brothers. Welcome. Glad to have you here today. Thank, Thank you really for having it. us. Sarah, first of all, tell us about your group and its mission, what you're trying to accomplish. Okay. The Autism Society of the Bluegrass is a chapter of the National Autism Society of America and our charter requires us uh, and we certainly uh, see it as our mission to provide information, education, support and advocacy to anyone who has an interest in autism. And I'm sure that makes a big difference to the families. Well, I think it does. I know that I could not have done what I've done over the years of my child's life without the support of everyone else. I know that as soon as I became involved in that group, I was among experts. I'm, I really do mean that. So we, among our best offerings is a, a listserv that is, uh, last time I checked, the largest autism listserv in the state with 700 members. So anytime anyone has a question or an, uh, comment about autism, they can reach the experts. Mm -hmm. And That's we really try good. to use the money that we will get this weekend um, to bring in, we have a, a wonderful speaker for every one of our monthly meetings, and we try to have periodic workshops, conferences, where we bring in voices from outside of this area so people can have access to the experts well, elsewhere. Good. Very good. Sure, you're going to tell us about the walk itself, yes. and that's coming up, and what do you have planned? Our walk is Sunday. Uh, August the 28th and it's from 1 to 4 and the actual walk starts at 2 p.m. We have a sensory friendly area in the kids area. We have a playground, we have inflatables and we're going to have a silent auction and the Lexington businesses have been very generous about donating some wonderful items and we have uh, over 50 exhibitors with uh, our sponsors and vendors and different agencies. And it's just gonna be a great resource for our families to come out and get some valuable information. And Absolutely. then we're gonna have food and you know popcorn pizza for our families. Make it fun. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. And Tiny Tallman, who's gonna yeah. come out and he's going to do uh, animal balloons for our families and mm -hmm. individuals and all of our guests. So we invite you to come out and enjoy this wonderful walk and you can register at www.bluegrassautismwalk.org. And so it's still time to form a team, and mm -hmm. we will recognize our teams who have the most walkers. And we're going to do a photography, we're going to do a photo for them, and we're going to do a feature story Very for good. the team mm -hmm. who has those. Sunday mm -hmm. afternoon. We've got a lot going. We One until four, going. and it's at Whitaker Bank Ballpark, and we appreciate you coming in. Hey, thanks for letting us come. Thank you. Well, be sure to keep it here this mid morning. Going to check in with the Mr. Food Test Kitchen next and see what's cooking up here early in the brand new week. Coming up in just a little while, WKYT News at noon. We'll get an update on that huge party over the weekend in Whitley County that ended with three people being arrested. A lot more uh, run away from the uh, location there. Also, we'll hear about the memorial to the victims of Com Air Flight 5191. And we'll find out more about volunteers who are now heading to flood ravaged Louisiana from Kentucky. News, weather, and sports ahead at noon on WKYT. Well, who would have thought that you could make such a great dinner with the help of a drink mix? The folks in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen, that's who. When it comes to making steak, whether it's out on the grill or inside in a skillet or grill pan, there's only so many ways to change it up. At least that was the case before we came up with a new twist that has everyone in our test kitchen talking. Plus, it's perfect for Margarita Mondays. All we do is place a few strip steaks in a glass baking dish or a resealable plastic bag. 
and top it with a can of frozen margarita mix that we've thawed. You see, the tartness in the mix gives them a fresh, summery taste while they marinate. Right before cooking these, we drain them and sprinkle both sides with some coarsely ground pepper. A few minutes on the grill or grill pan is all it takes to bring all the flavors together. We finish them off with a little salt, just like you would a margarita, and dinner is served. So rather than settling for just another ordinary steak, try one that will leave a lasting impression. To get the recipe, just go to our website and search for Sizzling Margarita Steak. That way you can celebrate Margarita Mondays in a whole new way. I'm Howard in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen, where today we found a fiesta kind of way for you to say, ooh, it's so good. Mm. <laughs> Make a meal of that, huh? <laughs> Looks pretty good, yeah. absolutely. If you're planning on grilling out the rest of the afternoon off into the evening hours, it will be phenomenal. This is the best day we have felt so far this summer. I mean, it feels fantastic. Now, we go off towards your day tomorrow. Yeah, the temperatures rise just a bit, but humidity should be relatively low tomorrow. It's actually on your Wednesday into your Thursday you start to feel the changes. We'll be at 86 there on Wednesday, only a slight chance of rain. And then we hit that Thursday, Friday time frame where the rain moves on in. But this isn't widespread rain. This isn't some kind of rain we should be worried about right now. I just don't see that happening. This is a front that's coming on through that has very little moisture to work with. And so that's good news for us because we just don't want to talk about flooding. We don't talk about severe <laughs> yeah. weather. No, we, we don't, don't have to do that on, on this round. So it looks pretty looks good. good. All right. Maybe, uh, you know, we'll settle into a fall like pattern. We'll see. Here. Wouldn't yeah. that be great? Thank you for joining us for WKYT at mid morning. The Bold and the Beautiful is next on CBS. We hope to see you back here at noon.